It came from Tibet, I'm not gonna lie, all right? I'm, okay. But we'll be biased, we need please do it better. Oh! oh. Yeah. What? What? If you ask the average person what they know about Nepal, they might at best mention Mount Everest. But there is such an incredibly diverse history that reaches back thousands of years that between the food, culture, religion, and people, we couldn't fit it in a short video. So we're gonna go dive deep into Nepalese culture the best way we know how without leaving the country by going to Queens, New York. The expedition is led by our mixed Gurung Nawari Brahmin party promoter friend, Sid. So sit back, learn something, get a little hungry, and hit that like button right now, because this is the world and why. Let's go. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a very special episode of The World and Why. Today, we are in Queens, New York, and we are about to do a crazy Nepalese food crawl. You know, we're about to hit up so many spots, but we could not do this without a Nepalese friend. And here with us, we got Sid. Hey, guys, my name is Sid, Sidhan Laimishane, and I come from Nepal. I was born in Nepal. I come from many different backgrounds. I have an identity crisis, to be honest. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> my mom's a guru, my dad's a Brahmin, and I grew up in a Nawari family. So you spent a lot of your life in Queens, so you know the lay of the land, and you're gonna show us where we're going today. I did, I did. I, I did grow up in a lot of bunch of different places, but my parents moved here since I was a kid. All right, Sid, what are we doing today? Because I, I just gotta get the breakdown, because I know we're going to a bunch of spots. All right, so I, I'm taking you to Dawa's. It's like a modern fusion, uh, really hipster place. And you got a lot of Himalayan menu. The owner herself is a Tibetan, but she grew up in Nepal, so you got some interesting food we can So, so it kind of like speaks to the complicated nature of the Himalayas, right? Because you have a ton of different people, different people from above the mountain, below the mountain, some people who mixed a couple hundred years ago and then created a new group of people. We're all over the place, yo. <laughs> After this, we're gonna go to Woodside Cafe, which is one of my favorite restaurants. We're gonna try some Nawari food over there. And then we're gonna go to Takali Kitchen, which is the most traditional Takali Nepali food that you right. could get. Okay. So we're going from kind of the hipster fusion modern spot to the traditional spots. That's right, that's right. Dallas, Dallas Kitchen, Kitchen. Let's, let's go. go. All right, Sid, on this Nepalese food crawl, why did we start here in Sunnyside, Queens at Dawa's? So I brought you guys over here so we could try some authentic, traditional Nepali breakfast. My name is Dawa. I'm a chef and co-owner of this restaurant. And I'm originally from Tibet, but I was born in Nepal and I went to boarding school in India. What do you want people to know about Himalayan food when they after they leave your restaurant? I would like them to know that it's a very humble, very minimum uh, ingredients because Himalaya is a high range, uh, I mean very high altitude, right? Uh, we are not abandoned with all these vegetables, so basically it's like a lot of root vegetables and um, dairy products and a meat. Yes, top climate and then still like, you know, make it uh, delicious. All right, you guys, breakfast is being served here at Dawa's. What are we looking at? So with me, I got this guaramari, which is a rice flour based fried dough. And then we got some black chickpeas. We call it chana. And then we got some sunny side eggs. Usually we get boiled eggs, but hey, we're at Dawa's. Right, because Dawa's is doing a little bit more you know, uh, deconstructed, reconstructed. Right. All the ingredients are the same. That's right. Different presentation. Oh. So this is a traditional Sherpa breakfast mm. found like you know in the mountain areas. So I am familiar with the buckwheat crepe, but not as much with the the squash. Guatemari. All right, you guys, I'm dipping it in the beans. Wow. I'm dipping it in uh, in some of the eggs, too. Wait, I thought Andrew was the mixologist. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is it not supposed to be <laughs> like that? Not how we're supposed to eat it? <laughs> it? It's not really how you, uh, so typically, you're supposed to dip it in a tea. Usually it's like milk tea, but today today we got some Tibetan butter tea. Hey, I'm just you, you eat it the traditional way. Yeah, I'm just gonna stick to some traditional way. All right. So you just dip it, and here it goes. Mm. Yeah, I heard the, uh, more of the milk teas kind of came in after the British came in, right? It so, did. Yeah, all right, so, but then it kind of got adopted, right? The but, here, but here we're keeping it more true, true, oh, yeah. high altitude, true school. <laughs> no. You better be. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> this is so good on the water This is one of the best breakfasts I've had in a long time. It, it feels like salsa, you know, with the chopped onions and tomatoes, but it has that spicy sauce and then these crispy, airy, kind of like biscuits. Oh my God. Ricky, Ricky Core. Core. All right, next up, number two breakfast dish. We got the Ricky Core, almost a what? A potato flatbread? Mm, wow. Oh. Sweet. Yo, the food here is fire. This mm. was super good too. 
And Dawa, do you think you were only able to come up with this menu because you knew so much about like all the different regions of the Himalayas? Because you, you didn't just know the cuisine of like one tribe, you knew of like so many. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then this is the thing, like even in a Nepalese, the, there's a different tribe and there are like specialties. Nevaris are good for like snacks, like you know, with the drinks. And Sherpa and uh, Tibetan, they're like momo, kind of. Okay. So every, every tribe has their specialties. I'm Kai. I've stopped in today for a late breakfast. I've had momos before, but this is the first time I'm trying their bone broth. Okay. Yeah. Does that remind, uh, how, how you like it? Like, what is it, what's in there? Mostly bone marrow. There's some white daikon radish. There's some thick noodles. There's some cilantro. It's really rich um, and flavorful. And there's a little hint of spice, which is nice. That's not partial to Chinese cooking, at least Cantonese style. So this is a, a nice variation of it. So, so what is so special about the, the mixture in Nepal, especially when it comes to like religions too? So statistically, they say 90% are Hindus and just 10% are Buddhists. But whoever made those left the big part out. That is, not only are we really tolerant and you know live together in harmony, but there's a lot of same common. Uh, there's a lot of common aspects of worship in many respects when it's when it comes to that. And in Nepal and only in Nepal, you got like a rare dual faith situation where you got two major religions that is the Hinduism and Buddhism. And then they're formed into one unique belief system. If that if, if that's not crazy, I don't know what what is. What? You know what I mean? That's unheard of anywhere else. So yeah. This is the okay. kuda and we're gonna dip the kuda in the Farsi. Farsi. That's right. Alright, people are thinking Farsi, that's like the Iranian oh. language, but we're not. It's fun. It's Farsi. Is Farsi. that the same kuda as this one? This is the Ricky kuda? This is the Ricky yeah. kuda. Oh. Yep. Hey, you got it, pancake, you got it, bro. She said it translates to potato that. pancakes, so you know. I've saucy. never seen this, this crazy inner. This is like a squash taco. Yeah. Wet squash taco. This is like a beardia squash taco. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm grabbing it, let's go. Ooh. All right. Yo, that is unlike everything I've ever had mm. before. Yeah. Okay, good. for me, you guys, bro. what was your favorite? I liked everything. Oh, I literally liked everything. I'm gonna go with the Ricky Cora. Man, my favorite, you? Guaramari. Yo, this, the whole plate, just the, the the fried puff and everything is so crispy and chewy. It was almost like eating savory donuts, right, with breakfast. Oh my God, I'm, there's not really that, there's, there's not that many things that are this crispy on the outside and gooey on the inside. I, I would usually go with the Guaramari, but this is the first time I'm actually trying this. And with the butter and the oh sauce, my oh my God, I love it, I love it. Man, you guys gotta come here, man. If you have had uh, Himalayan food, or if you haven't had Himalayan food, maybe this is like a really great introduction to it. Definitely. You know, just because it's very accessible, very easy to eat. Not only that, it's pan Himalayan. So next spot, we're going to Momo Crave. And if you know Nepalese, we're crazy about our momos. Yeah. And we know how to do it right. And we're gonna talk about Momos versus Nepalese momos. Oh! The, the, the debate goes on. <laughs> All right, next we're going to Woodside. We're actually headed to 65th Street, which is around the area of Jackson Heights, which is, I'd say, the gateway to Jackson Heights. Well, I've heard it be referred to as Himalaya Heights. It is, it is. Jackson Heights, one of the most diverse uh, places in the world. I mean, New York has the most diverse city in the world, and Jackson Heights, the most diverse spot in it. All right, Sid, our next spot is Momo Crave. Can you give us a little background on it? So basically, if I had to live on one dish for the rest of my life, that would be Momo's. Whoa, okay, whoa, so, whoa. So you say you will live off Momo's. Before we get into this, there's some debate because the origin of the Momo is a little bit debated, especially the one that is, is shared between Tibet and Nepal. Where did it come from? It came from Tibet, I'm not gonna lie, all right? I'm, okay. but, but, I thought you were gonna but, say Nepal. Right, right. But I will be biased, we need please do it better. Oh! oh. Yo, mom's Momo truck in the Tibet <laughs> video was pretty good. So we'll see. It's no beef, no but, beef. but it's, all, all, it's, all, it's all friendly though. Yeah, it's all hey. weird just messing around. But, but there are more Tibetan Momo trucks than there are Nepalese Momo trucks, correct? There are, there are, yes. Momo, Momo Crave, Crave in Jackson, Jackson Heights. Heights. All right, you guys, we're in Momo Crave right now. It's owned by Nepalese, established in 2018. Let's meet the man behind it. Okay. Yo, what's up, man? Abu Shek, right here. Man, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay. Nice to meet you. Hey, tell us what you're doing here on Momo Crave. Sure, yep, yo, we, we specialize in fusion momos. It's, uh, it's Himalayan dumplings with different kinds of flavors. What we do is uh, we have integrated 
uh, some flavors from South Asia and Indian, Indian subcontinent as well as we have uh, flavors from America. So we've got around like 12 varieties of different kinds of momos. This sort of like modern fusion momo movement is uh, relatively new, right? It is, it is. But wait till you try the tacos momo. You're gonna see the Jackson Heights, the Elmhurst mix to this momo it's right here. Okay. All right, you guys, we are looking at a crazy momo feast that Momo craves. Can we just point out some of the ones real quick? Like we have the tandoori momos. That's right, and then you got the chak momo, you got the sukuti momo, you got the chili momo, you got the sizzling momo, which is my favorite. We got some jol momo, which is like the more traditional type. And here we got sandeko momo and tacos momo, which is something you would not find anywhere. What's sandeko? Sadeko is more like a marinated, sauteed, like, you know, with different spices. So it almost reminds me of a black pepper steak dish or something like that, but sizzling. Sizzling, sizzling momo. momo. And the round ones are chicken, the long ones are beef. So we're eating a chicken one right now. It reconfirms the best chicken dumpling is the momo, is the chicken momo. Oh my God. No, that was good. Uh. You know, the momo's cooked and then it's cooked again on the stone. Taco, Taco momo. momo. And remember a long time ago, I had that idea for like taco balls. Uh huh. This is the closest thing. They did it. So Jacksonites, Elmer's area, you, uh, we, we got a lot of South American people and you got like tacos, burritos, trucks, like everywhere. This is a great fusion. Just bringing momos and you know, adding some black beans and you got the sour cream mm -hmm. and the guacamole. San Diego momo. So San Diego is a traditional dish. Strong, kind of sour, spicy kick right there. Oh, Joel Momo. Okay, so what kind of sauce is this? Um, what kind of sauce are these are these momos bathing in right now? So the sauce is actually sesame and soybean based. Uh, okay. And then we put some cilantro. Uh, mm. It has a special Himalayan plum in it. It's called lapsi. Lapsi. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's only for that gives the sourness to the chili. Yeah. Yeah. Tandoori Tandoor Momo. momo. Chili Momo. Okay, chili this kind of looks like a sweet and sour chicken. Typically, this dish is chili chicken, right? But then you guys just did it with the Momo, right? Basically. <laughs> Salty and spicy right there. This is a Sukuti Momo. Sukuti, which is like a sun-dried beef that you get in Nepal. Uh, these, have been, these have been dried for like days and weeks. And you know, they just made us a, a fusion with the Momo. So yeah, let's dig in, boys. Sukuti Momo. Beef Momo with sun-dried beef on it. Wow. Chaat, chaat momo. momo. What is chaat? So chaat is basically an Indian street food that you get. So they mix it with the peas, they got the yogurt. A chaat momo, guys. Traditional, Traditional beef, beef momo. momo. Okay, so this is more like old school style. Like even a hundred years ago, it looked like this, right? Yep. Beef <laughs> momo. Whoa. <laughs> Maybe because it's hot, th th this is the one that does it for me. Oh my God. This is crazy. This was incredible. The amount of juice, guys, I'm telling you, Momos, if you never have them, they're almost like soup dumplings in the sense that there is a lot of juice in there. Lastly, here at Momo Crave, we've got chow mein uh, and potato chili. Which could you call it Nepalese Lomo Saltado? Because it looks like stir fried fries. Mm. Oh. This is the Nepalese style. Momo. All right. Mmm. Kind of like, like sweet, sweet and sour Jojos. Almost like some sweet and sour Jojos. Dude. You guys call it chow chow or chow mein? We call it chow mein. Okay. Yeah. Chow chow is actually like a different dish. It is. It oh, is. Interesting. It's the instant noodles oh. that we're gonna get. It. Oh. it kind of tastes like a really good version of something you'd have at a Mongolian grill. Yeah, oh, yeah. What was your favorite thing on the table, man? You could only pick one. Sizzling momos. Sizzling momos. I, Andrew, what are you going with? Oh, my favorite was the classic, just because they were so fresh and juicy. Straight off the steam. To, yeah. to avoid saying what everybody else said, but, but honestly, this was up there. I'm going with the Sakuti. The beef on beef. All right, guys, that was an incredible, quick Momo feast that we had here at Momo Crave. Uh, I definitely recommend it, guys, if you're into Momos at all. I mean, we've had the trucks. Everything is good. Um, but man, are we headed to somewhere else? So we're headed to Woodside Cafe next and we're gonna try some authentic Newari food. Let's, Let's go. go. Paul is such a mixed place and I think we saw that illustrated by even looking at Dawa. Dawa is Tibetan, right? But she was raised in Nepal. And then Momo Crave is owned by a person who's Newari and then a person who is Sherpa, but they're both Nepalese. And then your parents look like wildly different. I guess, could you say your dad kind of looks sort of like a Bollywood guy? <laughs> Yeah, don't praise him too much, man. <laughs> and then your mom looks very much like a uh, very Asian. 
whether it could be a mixed Asian, maybe like Tibetan Burmese. Yeah. So you're That's saying that there's a number of looks in Nepal? Number of. So yeah, we got like 120 languages, different tribes, and you know, it's just people living in harmony. So you don't be surprised if you run into like, you know, people looking like probably an Asian, like a proper Asian, or like, you know, an Aryan, or even a mix of both, or, or even Indians. You so know? you're saying some people look like part white in Nepal? They do, right? Right. <laughs> I, so we were talking about Andrew, the Indo Aryans, yeah. which is kind of like a spectrum from someone who looks like uh, maybe like Aziz or Hari Kondabula, which is like South India, all the way up north to like a, what, Shaka Khan? Shah Rukh Khan. 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 Dev Patel. So, so I got a question. I got a question. This is a deep question. If you're a more East Asian looking Nepalese or a more South Asian looking Nepalese, do you think that when they come to America, like maybe they, do they more stay as Nepalese or do you think maybe because like they're more Asian looking, they more hang out with more Asians? Well, you know, like just, could that happen? That could, but me personally speaking, I, I, I you know, I, I get along with everyone. In Nepal, we got three regions. We got the Himalayan region, you got the hilly, and then you got the plains. So in the Himalayan region, you got more of the Mongoloids looking people, like, you know, from the Sherpas, the Gurungs, and like, you know, the Rais. And then you go to the hillies, like, you know, which Kathmandu, where I, where I was born. Uh, you got more of a Newar, you know, in and around the valley. And then you go to the plains where you meet the Madesis, which are like, you know, really the Indian looking tribes. Like, oh. more like a... Aziz or, or you, Hari. Oh yeah, did you yeah, call them the Madesis? Madesis, so Madesi. Is that where like Daisy comes from maybe? Yeah. Like it's connected, okay. That's right. Okay. okay. Yo, I love the history lesson. So we just checked out two modern Nepalese spots. Where are we headed to now? So we're headed to Woodside Cafe, one of my favorite spots, and we're gonna try some authentic Newari lunch. Let's do it. It's good. All right, for our third spot, we are still in Jackson Heights, but we are gonna be trying Newari cuisine. That is a specific tribe from Nepal. Sid, I'm gonna let you take it from here. We're with the owner of Woodside Cafe. Nawari is a tribe uh, in and around the Kathmandu Valley, which is the capital. And right. we, were, we were talking about it earlier, like the middle altitude, right? The middle altitude, and they got some of the best food in the world. So here's the owner. He would like to give you a quick intro. We have Nawari food since, uh, since 10, 12 years. We are working here. 12 years? Okay. Yes. 12 years. So what can you tell us about Nawari food? Because a lot of people, they don't know, you know, like they don't even know what Nepalese is. They don't know about the different tribes in Nepal. What, how do you describe Nawari we are, food? We are in Nepal, we are part of in the middle part in, in Kathmandu. But we have food, Nawari food, we, like Kathmandu, Bhaktapur, Nepal, and what we have, Nawari food, a lot of people. People must walk into Woodside yeah. Cafe and not know that they're yeah. about to get some delicious yeah. Nepalese food. Woodside, Woodside Cafe, Cafe, let's, let's go! go. All right, so we have a Nawari meal right here, and we got Brashan right here. Um, could you describe yeah. to us what we're eating? All right, so this right here, let's start with this. So this is fried fish. It's like a, it's a whitening fish, sauteed with uh, like a marinated sauce and stuff, and then it's deep fried. The Nawari thali, that's what it's called. Uh, it's pretty much beans, soybeans, like a, it's the marinated chicken. It's called choila. This is aloo, achar, potato, pickles and some spinach. What's that in the middle? It's uh, bitten rice. It's a rice smashed bitten dry rice. Yeah. 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 It looks like oatmeal, yeah. you know, to the untrained yeah. eye. Right. So this yeah. is like a tradition food, pretty this, much. Okay. Yeah. This is mutton shekwa. It's uh, mutton shekwa. It's like a pan fried. That's what's called shekwa. Shekwa is like pretty much pan fried. Mm -hmm. So this right here is a uh, goat mutton. It's a uh, intestine of a goat right here. And this is ro uh, rohu fish. It's, it's a curry, pretty much. The whole fish with uh, marinated with sauce and then deep fried. And this right here is a uh, like a you kid want to go? It's like sweet. It's a sweet dessert. Rice flour. Sweet dessert with rice flour. Uh, it's, it's a soup. Very good for winter. It's called alu tama buri. So this right here, it's a spe very special dish in Nepal. So we it, we we usually eat this right? like in Nepal. You, everybody eat this. It's like a it's like a raw beef sauteed meat. So it's pretty much raw. It's right. like what you eat in a hot pot, but without putting it in a hot Thinking pot. Right, right, right. <laughs> it almost it's looks raw. like a, a Lebanese dish I've had called yeah. kibbeh there. Or kofta. Yeah, yeah. yeah it looks like kofta. Yeah. It's really good. It's interesting, okay. Yeah. It's called samay bazi, right? Uh, Tachamari. In English, it's called, we pretty much translated it, it's like Nepo Nepali pizza. Mm. It's with uh, rice flour, mashed, it's mixed with mashed potato, black eyed peas, and our choice of a meat. This okay. today is chicken. Godzilla, raw beef, guys. I thought we were saying Godzilla. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was Coachella and Godzilla put together. 
That was nice. Yeah, it almost tastes like it's cooked. It has like that like grilled saute flavor like you yeah. said, except it's, it's raw. I'm not gonna lie guys, that's actually my favorite raw beef dish. And I've had it in a lot of different cultures. I had the Korean yukwe. I had the um, beef tartar, beef tartar, yeah. obviously from also, France. Uh, no, I believe the carpaccio. Yeah, carpaccio. Yeah. I'm going ahead and this say this is it. good. Yeah, I'm trying right. to get this. Well, this chicken. one usually I would I, I would go with the spoon because with the traditional rice and dal that you eat with your hands. Yeah. So okay. Just dry rice. Yeah. It's very flaky. All right, let's go in. Whoa, so me, God. I'm gonna try some of these marinated uh, chicken. Is it yeah. chicken yeah. toila? Yeah. Which is one of my favorite Nepali dishes, uh, Newari dishes. And then you got a little bit of mustard greens and the beaten rice. Mm. Here it goes. You go ham with your hand. <laughs> <laughs> but with no ham. <laughs> no ham. This, yeah, no this mashed dried rice is crazy. I've never yeah. had anything like this. This rice is like, they're almost like really thin rice flakes. Almost like if you had a popped rice or those like rice crackers, but it's like little bits of it and it's mashed Flaky. down. Really interesting. I'm gonna go in on the pizza, it has an egg on top. I'm gonna dip it in the sauce. Is this how I eat it? Yeah, yeah. All right. Mm. Oh, oh. All right. You lost the egg, you lost the egg. Mmm. Oh, that's really good. It was a very strong stewy flavor. Hey, that this is a crazy experience for me. This is so dope because I can tell that this is so authentic yeah. and so deep cut from the Nawari tribe. Matsutariko, this yep. is just a whiting fish. So this is more like a freshwater river fish. Yep. And tariku when it costs the cost the like you it's like a uh, very hot oil, you put it on the Oh oil, yeah, so just deep fry that. Deep fry. Yeah, Flash just fry. deep fry. That's, that's yeah. pretty much. Mm. So with me I got the sikwa, which is also another one of my favorite dishes. This is like a charcoal grilled uh, meat. So mm. this is goat meat. And you know it's marinated in different spices, but this is one of my favorites. And my dad loves this too. Here, try the fish. The fish mm. is fire. Try the fish? Yep. That's goat intestines? Yes, that's yep. intestines with goat. You, you do the deep fried intestines. The too. intestine and liver mix. They eat, they don't waste any part of the goat. Like, <laughs> <laughs> none. Not bad. Not bad. I didn't know, I'm, I'm not that into intestines or livers, but that was not bad. Mm. It's very chewy. Goat worked hard. Got another, uh, another type of fish? Yep. I'm not saying Nepal is famous for fish because it's. Not anywhere close to the ocean, but the fishes ain't bad. Somehow you guys got the fishes, <laughs> the fish dishes right. <laughs> Call it Lalmun. 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 All right. I grew up in a Newari family. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was raised by yeah. My, my, my yeah, you know. Yeah, we. <laughs> oh, trust me, bro. <laughs> we talked about that. <laughs> mm. You are every tribe. Oh. Mm. See, yeah, I told you. Nepalese version is better. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, is that the bamboo soup? Yep. It really is like a mixture of, of cultures because I see like a lot of Indian influences. I see bamboo and some of the vegetables, the greens, they look like more um, like East Asian. And then mm -hmm. I see all these other things that I've never seen before. So it's just like this really cool like culmination of it all. Yeah. We're talking about how even uh, other Nepalese people get confused about uh, what tribe you're from because actually you're from two different tribes. I am, I am. So like I said, my dad is a Brahmin and my mom is a Guru. But at the same time, I grew up in a Newari family, which was like, you know, from my dad's side. And when they were, when they moved here, uh, I was still with them over there. So I kind of like, you know, so I grew up eating these kind of food, but I looked different. And even the homie over here was like, yo, Sid, like you're, you're mad confusing, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if my own people tell me that, like, you know, Yo. So you're saying you're kind of like the the Steph Curry of the Nepalese? Like, I don't know. What are you? Or, Which one or, are you? Or, or or the Drake? The, the Drake? Drake. Hey, you Drake one you want to be? The Drake or Steph? Very ambiguous. You can be I, Drake or Steph. You you get to choose. Pink sauce, Momo. Okay, what is in the pink sauce? Tomato, tomato, marinated tomato sauce with a heavy cream mix. Oh, so it's an Momo. Italian fusion. Yep, it's like, Ooh, you heard that? It's like, Ravioli it, vodka. It actually really looks, looks like a vodka like, sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm down to try it, man. The pink sauce momos. Pink, pink sauce, sauce momos, momos here at Woodside Cafe. Oh, yeah. Yo, it actually tastes like pasta alle vodka mix uh, in momo. You know, we are wrapping up here at Woodside Cafe, Nawari feast. Very, very dope. I got to say, man, maybe the raw beef? was my favorite. I don't know. It's I might really have. good. Guys, I think if you come here and you're okay with eating raw beef, I know not everybody is, but you got to try this, man. If you've had beef tartare and you've had the Korean one, got to get this one.
Mine would definitely be the sequa. This just makes it feel like home, you know what I mean? I'm gonna go with this bamboo soup right here. That was really good. Altama. Almost tasted like a mafongo or, or something like some type of <laughs> chicken stew from like the Caribbean. These go back a thousand years, so yeah. you know what I mean? Cheers! Let's drink the chang. Ah! <laughs> Babos? Baba. All right, you guys, we just wrapped up our Nawari feast here at Woodside Cafe. Where are we headed to now? Next, we're headed to Mustang Takali Kitchen, which is like the traditional, authentic Nepali dinner, lunch, whatever you want to call it. So it's basically dal bhat and assorted side dishes. Mm. Let's, Let's go! go. Uh, you're Nepalese, right? But you're half uh, Sherpa, half what? No, I'm half llama, half guru. So you're half llama, half guru, and yeah. that llama is from Dalai Lama's llama. Yeah, yeah, you can say that. So cool. you're, you're Buddhist? Yeah, help you right. Buddhist. So anybody, is there anybody, most people with the last name Lama is, will be probably Buddhist? Yeah, most of them. Okay. Yeah, most of them. And Andrew got a new twin too. <laughs> so cool. And we, we are dressed the same. All right, you guys, this is our last and final spot on our crazy Nepalese restaurant food crawl. Sid, where are we at? So we're in front of Mustang Takali Kitchen. Mustang is a city in Nepal, and Takali are the tribe that not a big tribe I would say but Takalis make the best Nepali Talis. Alright man let's go get some of the best Talis in Jackson Heights. Talis from Takalis. Let's real quick before we step down and get these Takali Talis real quick. Uh Sid you used to live in India. I did. I went Can't, to boarding school there. And I heard you do a mean Indian accent. Oh yeah talk to me buddy. <laughs> talk to me. What do you want to talk to me? This is bull <laughs> um, I mean, hey, hey, you grew up around hey, people, no you offense, can do it. y'all. No, you can do it, you so live there. Me that. All right, you guys, we are at Takali Kitchen. We got Tali's in front of us. You, we're looking at that. I've never seen that before. Woo. What's that? So that's a buckwheat uh, paste, I would call it. S similar to the West African fufu, but it's made of buckwheat in Nepal. Oh, Man, wow. you ever seen anything like Yo, that? Yo, I'm not gonna lie. I thought it was like gooey, but it's steamed. It and is. And it's like firm, and it's all cooked together. Okay, so how, how do I do I dip it Just in this do oil? That. Yeah, just a bit, a little bit of that oil. Okay. Kind of like and the inside then, of a taro bun too. Wow. And then you gotta put it with, with some of the curries. So over here we got, so so we got some fish curry over here. Okay. So yeah, probably just dip it in. All right, all right. Grab some. I'm gonna grab it in this. And this. So There's not cool. much of a taste in the in the buckwheat, Yo, but guys, you just gotta mix it. I've had, uh, last time I had buckwheat was buckwheat soba. You know, like the Japanese soba buckwheat noodles, but I've never had buckwheat in this You form. You said off camera, this is called Dido. 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 And dido. dip the Dido in the curry. I'm getting the Dido. Whoa, whoa that, I never had anything like that. Is it, I don't know if it's because we're in New York or whatever, because I don't know what the fishes in Nepal taste like, but you guys' fish recipes for a nation that doesn't have I a know. lot of fish, <laughs> pretty <laughs> good. Our country, we, we make it pretty good, huh? Let's figure it out. <laughs> so Dalbhat is a part of the Tali. Mm. Oh, so dal bhat so is dal just... Bhat is dal is the lentil soup, and bhat is basically rice. I really like the dido. No, hey. Yeah. I'm, I'm eating the dido with everything. What else, what else we got here? So we got some dal, we got some ghee, this is some clarified butter. Yeah. Then yeah, you just gotta mix it. So we oh, just mix it. You pour it in and mix yeah, it. Yeah, just stir it around. Wow, wow, you know wow. I mean, just so feel that clarified butter. Mix it down so so mix it down finger down. in there, and then I'm just gonna. I don't get too carried away, yeah. guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Just pour it. Yeah, just pour it. Wow. Right, and then you just fucking mix it. Yep. Wow. And then you just mix it. Mix it up. So mix it again. So, oh, <laughs> don't, no, no, just right here. Just two hands, David. Oh my bad. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this is the, no, the cleanest. There's no clean way to eat with your hands, is it? But Nepalis kind of do it right. So me, basically. So this took like you know some lessons in a way. So basically, you just use three of these. Mm -hmm. No, so four of these and your thumb, and you just like you know mix it up, and then you just get a little bit of that mustard, okay. and here, and then. You, you you just pick it with the thumb, yeah, you know you what I mean? Scoop it you off. Scoop right? it off. Push it. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yo, I got this. Uh, this tali has some curry chicken in there. And basically, after after a scoop, you basically just take the radish pickle, take a small bite. Right. Fills your taste buds. What about the chicken? Go curry. This gives it a little crunch. You know what I mean? Mm. This, and then I'm gonna grab. David some. going ham, yeah. bro. <laughs> David going ham. I'm grabbing some go curry. <laughs> I'm grabbing oh. some go curry. And then I'm gonna grab this chip. Oh! Talk about fusion. And, and then I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of rice on it. Mm hmm. 
So you gonna watch out for that. Wait, bone. you got the bone over yeah, there. Yeah, just though. watch out for the bone over there. Yep. You know what? Of all the spots we went to today, this is probably the one that I could eat at obviously like every day. In terms of you know, it's really light. But in a way, this is what Nepali people eat every day. This okay. is the fuel that keeps Nepal going. Yeah, you know the you know the phrase dal bhat power twenty four hour. Dal bhat power twenty four hours. Guys, I'm here with the chef and the co-owner over here, Sharmila Sirtan, mm -hmm. and she's gonna tell us more about Mustang and Takali people as a tribe, mm -hmm. and about how this place actually just started. So please, Ozu. Oh. You say, I'm eating Mustang Dilla Jum Sumbataho, you know, on your canate, Amro Kormasadi, Patni Hanao, Yo Hamisode, Gano, Beluga, Poila Poila Hamle, or Yoshila, or Dudon Kurumada, or Rice Lai, Malons Kurma Hento, or Azaboli, time change was about Yoshila, Milons Kurma, on your rice lai, rice tali, or Lajami Dinner Hanzo. So basically, she is from Jom Som in Mustang. Mustang. And the food they said originated from uh, the Takali people, where we ate the rice for lunch and the dito for dinner. So they started off in 2008, and this has been for almost 13 years now. So Takali Kitchen, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, would be the most Nepali food that you could eat. You know, breakfast. I mean, lunch, dinner. So you know, you got the whole tali. So yeah, Mustang Takali Kitchen. Cool. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Right. Thank you. All right, you guys, that brings us to the end of our Nepalese crawl through Queens, New York. You guys, the days are short, the winter's here. Andrew, what was your major takeaway? Man, my major takeaway is that uh, I just really didn't know how diverse Nepal was. Like, I had had Nepalese food like once or twice before, but you never never delve deep and really talk to this many people and obviously having you there uh, take us through it all um, I just learned so much and yes the culture is super deep there's a lot of history and it's extremely diverse but you guys all get along yeah I mean I think uh, someone told me that it might be the my most diverse country in the world in terms of uh, language diversity for sure right it is uh, so like I said we have 120 languages different fucking tribes <laughs> you know it's it's crazy yeah and, I, I heard and the whole country is the size of Manhattan is that true it's, it's the size of New York so the entire country of Nepal is the size of New York but there's 120 languages almost natively being spoken there that's right so so how do you think people get along or communicate I, I mean just speaking for the youth I'd say there's a lot of THC involved yeah you know what I mean a little bit <laughs> laid-back vibes They're chilling like, you know out there I mean? you're saying okay yeah so it's not just Nepal but I would just say for the world in general. Like John Lennon said, just give peace a chance, man. Why can't we all get along, you know what I mean? It's the spirit of the Nepali people, which is like a never give up attitude. Mm -hmm. Because we've been through a lot of adversities, like, you know, we had the earthquake back in 2015, and then we're still rebuilding from that. But the fact that we, Nepalese, we never gave up. We stuck together. If we could, hey, the whole world could. So. I just want to do this quick uh, segment for people to kind of explain, you know, why you're an interesting personality here in New York, because you're a party promoter, but you're a first generation immigrant. Very uncommon. Most people become like pharmacists or dentists or doctors or, you know, something proper. You you work in nightlife. How did you become the immigrant and turn into the lit immigrant? Well, I actually started nightlife when I was back in Thailand. I, I, I lived there for five years, like shout out to the homies back in Bangkok. And yeah, I just got into the nightlife. Uh, I started DJing, got into like the clubs. That's where I really learned about the nightlife. And then I came here and boom, it was not hard to, you know, just adjust to it. I actually was blown away uh, by the diversity amongst Nepalese people, genetically, different tribes, mixed tribes like yourself. I love meeting new people and, you know, just learning about the new culture. This is what I've been doing my whole life. And this is what I do for a living right now. You know, just meeting new people, introducing new people, putting them in a place. In a way, this comes with, it's an occupational hazard too, you know what I mean? But this is the best part about me just working as a nightlife, like, you know, in the nightlife. So you're saying you working in nightlife is somewhat still in line with the Nepalese spirit of being at peace with each other, kind of like blending things together for harmony reasons, I guess. Well, in, in, in ways put, yeah, I, I, I'd say that. I'd say that. I think if I didn't know you said, I'd be like, yo, that's BS promoter talk. But having <laughs> knowing you, man, that's real hey, stuff. Hey, nah, you already know. You're putting different people to the table, just like people, different types of people in Nepal. David, what was the favorite thing you ate today? Oh. Two. 
Just no, no, I'm not. Just my favorite thing. Favorite one thing. Bro. Oh man, a potato pancake at mm. Dawa Kitchen oh, with no. the with the green no, sauce. Rick, yeah. Rick, no, I, I keep thinking about Ricky the. Cora. I keep Ricky thinking Cora. about. I keep thinking about the Ricky Kura from uh, Dawa Kitchen. For wow. Me. What about you, Andrew? Just the fresh steamed beef momos at Momo Crave. Me, well. Did because you discover anything new that you yes, really liked? Yes, For me, it had to be the Momo and pink sauce because that had a lot of it in the poly-Italian fusion to it because the rest of the things, I'm, I'm, I'm usually eating it around here, but that, Woodside Cafe, you outdid yourself with that one. Shout out. And, and obviously, just the Takali, uh, the Tali, Takalis, those, I, it just felt really light and something that would power you through the day. Right. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching our Nepal crawl through Queens, New York. Please let us know in the comments section below what you thought of the food. What's another food we need to try in the New York area? And again, guys, remember, we may or may not be traveling for a while, so you can travel within your city, travel in your spirit, travel in your mind. Huge shout out to Sid, and until next time, we're out. Peace. Peace.